Hi guys, this is Matt, the crypto miner. This is the second video of our series of five videos. And this one is going to be about the fundamentals of blockchain. This is where we are in the presentation. So let's start straight away with the fundamentals of cryptocurrencies. So cryptocurrencies, what you need to know is that they are 100% digital currencies. So it's a big, big, big difference with regular currencies like Euro, Dollar, which have a form of paper. You must know that 90% of the currencies in the world are actually digital. So Euro, you know, most of the time it's th through a bank card or it's from an account to another account, but there's still 10% of it, which is physical. In the world of cryptocurrencies, you do not have any physical coins or notes or anything. That's only digital, which means that you can only pay and use cryptocurrency if you have an internet connection. Uh, now, the, the things you might think, oh, maybe it's not so secure and, uh, and it can be a, a bit problematic, but it's not. It's not because uh, it's based on a very, very high level cryptography system. And that's actually why they are called cryptocurrency, because they are based on cryptography for the security. Now, something very important about um, the cryptocurrencies to understand is that the fees are very, very low. So if you want to send one Bitcoin or if you want to send 1,000 Bitcoins, the fees will be the same. And in general, they are about 30, 50 cents of Euro or dollar. So very, very small, very, very small. And recently we had the largest transaction ever on Bitcoin. And this transaction was $1 billion, $1 billion value in Bitcoin. Can you imagine? And this was for 60 cents. So that's just uh, unbelievable. And that's a big difference with the regular uh, banking system because if you want to send uh, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million uh, euros or dollars, then it's going to be extremely expensive for the person or the company to send this money. And on top of that, and that's the next very interesting point, is that the transactions are extremely fast on uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So if you want to send money, the, the, the transaction and the funds will be received almost instantly. And that's also something that you can uh, see that is not available and not possible for regular um, currencies. If you want to send uh, some euros during the weekend, it's not possible. You need to wait for the Monday and the funds will be received by the person one or two or even three days later. And maybe sometimes you need to put the recipient as well in the in the transaction that so you want to say to a new person it will be two will take two or three days to validate just the fact that you are sending money to a new person so it's a, it's very very slow very inefficient but in cryptocurrencies you don't have all these things everything is almost instantaneous and that's very interesting and the last thing the last piece of information is that the cryptocurrencies they run on what is called the blockchain you may have heard about it and the blockchain is actually a technology and we're going to check uh, just in the next slide what is this kind of technology so the blockchain is simply a database of digital transactions that are sorted by block if you have one definition to keep in mind it must be this one is just a database of digital transactions. And you can imagine that like if it was an Excel table, a huge Excel table, okay? So the Excel table, you have lines and you can imagine that on each line, it's one transaction. So I send you one Bitcoin, that's a transaction. So it will be written in this Excel table. Matt sent one Bitcoin, okay, to some to him, okay? And um, you can imagine the tabs, you know, at the very bottom of Excel, you have tabs and you can imagine that a tab is a block. So all the transactions that are sorted by block and they are linked to each other. And that's why you have the blocks that are forming a chain of block. The block number five, if you check on the example that I'm giving you, is linked to the number four, the four to the three, the three to the uh, two, and the two to the first block ever. And the very first block is, is called the Genesis block. They just gave it uh, this, kind of, this kind of name. So that's why you have a list of transactions sorted by block, and all these blocks together are called the blockchain. 
What's interesting is that the blockchain, the way I was explaining is just a technology. It's a technology that Bitcoin is using, which means that you, you can use this technology even if it's not a cryptocurrency. If you are not a cryptocurrency, you can use the technology. Um, and actually, uh, the domain of application of blockchain are really, really huge outside of cryptocurrencies. But Bitcoin is using the blockchain because it's very interesting it's the, in the way it's, it's working. The first reason is that it's distributed, it's shared. So it's not that one person or one entity has the whole list of transactions and only keep it for itself secret. No, in the world of Bitcoin, all the transaction, the blockchain is shared to anyone who wants to have a copy of this uh, kind of Excel table of this blockchain. Everyone can has this blockchain on a computer. Okay, so it's absolutely transparent. And something also very important to understand is that it's absolutely reliable because it's based on the cryptography. If you remember cryptography, cryptocurrency. So what it means concretely that it's reliable, it means that once a transaction is written in the blockchain, it's impossible to, to go back in time and to cancel the transaction. So if I send you uh, one Bitcoin, I can't say later, no, it's not me. Uh, I want it back or something. It's not possible. And uh, the very last thing, uh, of in, the very last important part of information about the Bitcoin is that there's no central authority. So we were talking a bit before about uh, the banks, but in Bitcoin, you do not have any banks. You don't have banks. So generally speaking, if we talk about just the banks, regular banks, when I want to send 100 euros to someone or to pay for a service, then how does it work? The bank is checking that I have this money, verify the details of the person to whom I'm sending the, the funds. And if everything is okay, then the bank validates the transaction and the money is taken out of my account and is sent to the other person. But in the Bitcoin, what we just said is there's, there's no central authority. There's no bank, basically. There is no bank. So how does it work? It works with the miners. And the miners, there are people like you and me who are going to validate the transaction. And that's really the important thing about, uh, about mining, basically. That's what's very important about mining. So... Um, for validating and verifying all transactions, the miners are going to get a small commission. And that's the commission, the transaction fee that we were also discussing about uh, a bit earlier. So it's a small amount, but multiplied by thousands and thousands and thousands of transactions, then that's the way uh, miners are getting some money. Now, this is the difference visually uh, for you to see between a decentralized system and a centralized system. So the centralized system, uh, which is on the left, you can see that it would be the bank and all the customers around. So the thing is that the bank owns everything. They own your data. So if there's any problem with the bank, the whole system is screwed. And you can think of the bank like PayPal, for example. PayPal is a kind of bank as well and they own all the transactions. Um, they don't own the money, of course, but they own the ledger of transactions, the database of transactions. So they can say, okay, we, you, we get back the money from you because something happened. So they have the power of controlling your money. And that's the, pretty much the same with the banks. The banks, they can say, okay, you are not allowed to send this amount of money to this person for whatever reason, maybe the amount is too large. We, we see it with daily limits, for example, sometimes, okay, it's like 300 maximum per day and you can't send more. So that's a big problem. And uh, with the decentralization of a network, because there's no bank, you do whatever you want. And on top of that, the, uh, the availability of information is absolutely everywhere. As long as you want to have it on your computer, you can, and you can see, this database of transactions and the way I was explaining before is that it's reliable and it cannot be modified. On this map, you can see the distribution of Bitcoin nodes. So basically, there are people like you and me 
who have downloaded the blockchain because it's a file, right? it's a file that you can download like this Excel file and running it on the computer. So because you have so many people running this file, it's impossible to change just one uh, piece of data on one file because if you do that, like the whole rest of the network will, will see that you are trying to cheat and to do something. And that's why it's so secured to use the Bitcoin and all these cryptography systems uh, for running all the Bitcoin transaction, etc. So now um, that's the end of uh, this video and we are gonna check the next video, which is how uh, does crypto uh, currency mining work.